by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. Uh, just to, to everyone, uh, I'm very glad that the House Foreign Affairs Committee of the United States government has decided to approve the Tibet-China Conflict Act uh, uh, in the uh, House Foreign Affairs Committee led by Chairman McCall and uh, co-sponsored by uh, Jim McGovern. Uh, it is through the uh, joint effort of the International Campaign for Tibet led by its chairman Richard Gay and uh, its president Denzi uh, Shudana and Kujana uh, and France and the Office of Tibet led by Nangya uh, Shuruba uh, and his team that uh, we managed to uh, push this bill in the house and I'm very thankful to all the members of the Foreign Affairs Committee who unanimously approved this bill and hopefully in the very near future this will be passed, passed unanimously in the house and also in the Senate and Senate to, for the presidential accent. So thank you very much for the joint effort of everybody, uh, including the Department of Information International Relations of the Central Development Administration. We have been pushing for this bill in the last one year. And right now, uh, through our concerted effort and joint effort of everybody involved, uh, we have reached this first step of uh, moving this bill to turn into an act and I would like to thank again everyone who has been involved in this and we look forward to this being approved in the Senate as soon as possible. Thank you so very much. No stranger to the CCP's aggression and excessive claims and nobody knows that more than the Tibetan people. The promoting a resolution to the Tibetan China Dispute Act helps Tibetans in two major ways. First, it pushes back against CCP propaganda about the history of Tibet. The United States has never accepted that, quote, Tibet was part of China since ancient times, unquote, as the CCP falsely claims. This legislation clarifies U.S. policy, highlights the unique language, religion, and culture of the Tibetan people, and directs U.S. diplomacy to push back against CCP propaganda. Because for far too long, Beijing has repressed the Tibetan people and shirked its commitments to work with the Dalai Lama and his representatives to resolve the Tibet question through dialogue. I am deeply concerned by the ongoing effort by Beijing to dilute the distinct religious, cultural, linguistic, and historical identity of the Tibetan people. During a month when the Atheist Communist Party uh, claims that the Dalai Lama cannot recognize a successor without their approval. Uh, this bill is timely and sends the right message that this Congress stands with the Tibetan people and their struggle for freedom and fundamental human rights. Tibet is a distinct culture. It's a dis it has a distinct identity. I think this bill is an important statement by the Congress, and I'm, I'm so pleased to, to, to want to vote for it. China has continued their cultural genocide, announcing Tibet does not exist in pushing for the false name of Zizang. I agree very much uh, with my colleague, Congressman Scott Perry, that this should be uh, the beginning of passage of legislation to stand up for the people of Tibet and stand against the Chinese Communist Party genocide in Tibet. We do not accept what they're doing in Tibet and to the Tibetan people, and not only do we not accept it, we're willing to do something about it.